Well, folks, what a mess. What a mess things are today. I thought I'd better do this video blog. This is the first ever video blog I've done, actually. But I thought I'd better do it just to come and clarify a few things. There's a lot of rumours running around the internet. A lot of rampant speculation that conspiracy theorists are going wild. But I thought I'd better come and just clarify a few things so that uh, I can kind of make my position clear to stop people speculating, stop people posting their videos of what my opinion is on things when they really don't know what my opinion is. So I thought I'd offer my opinion. I want to start off briefly on the Zen Gardener issue. I think this needs touching on. There's people putting out videos, you know, Max on Zen Gardener as if they actually know what my opinion on the Zen Gardener issue is. Of course, they've got this opinion from one post that I made on Facebook when I said, well, looking at the Zen Gardener issue, there are two possibilities. Who knows which one it is? I think we need to have some sort of rational, uh, calm investigation before we go out and have a lynching. In fact, you know, I think we need a trial before any lynching in any case of anyone accused of anything. We need to have questions asked and we need to have, you know, rational answers to these questions. And that's what I suggested, basically that, you know, you need to have a trial before you're lynched. And if you're accused of anything, I'm sure you would like to have a trial before you're lynched. And I think the Zen Gardener does the same. You know, having said that, Zen does have a lot of questions to answer, and I'd like to see him answer these questions. I'd like to see him being given a chance to answer these questions. You know, Zen has questions to answer such as, you know, what was your position in the children of God? I've heard that you were the head of PR. I don't know. I haven't heard it from you. I've only heard people say this. I don't know. I'd like to have you answer that question. Um, you say that you routed out any types of incidences you found in your area. That's very noble. If you were head of PR, was not the entire cult your area? So I'd like to have that question answered. Um, if you were aware of these instances and you were head of PR, perhaps you should have exposed them then because your position would have given you the ability to do so. If you were aware of them, why didn't you? And why perhaps didn't you expose this cult and the things that it was up to if you were aware of these instances when you left the cult? And also, why perhaps wouldn't you have announced all of this and made this clear to everybody and blown the whistle on this cult before you set yourself up as the Zen gardener persona? I think that would have been far more productive. These are questions I'd like to have answered, Zen, I would, and I, I do need answers to these questions. I think everybody does. But I think that these questions have to be asked and they have to be answered in a rational way. But by saying that, that does not mean that I'm passionately defending the Zen gardener. That does not mean that I am covering up pedophilia, which people are accusing me of doing simply because I've taken that position. And I think that is a fair and rational and noble position to take. And if people are going to judge me for that, well, I suggest that you need to do a little bit of inner work. And I suggest that you should look at things a little bit more carefully because if you're ever accused of anything at all, what you're saying is that you're quite happy for them to lynch you before any trial. And I think that's counterproductive. So. That's my position on the Zen Gardener issue, and I hope that's crystal clear for everybody. And I hope I have no longer put any confusion out there for people to be able to construe my words and accuse me of saying things that I simply don't say. I would also question the, uh, the uh, integrity of anybody who uses somebody's name to post a video whereby they are defaming that person, and they're doing so in order to garner views and set themselves up as some sort of guru. I think that is uh, it's something that people should question, folks, because there are no gurus in any of this. This whole thing is about people's own path through life and about finding out what the truth is. So having said that, the position that I've taken with Ken O'Keefe, I want to really try to explain this to people, why I did the things that I did and why I did it in the way that I did. When the World Citizen Initiative first started, Ken put forth this idea he had that he wanted to see if we could create some sort of lawful contract that would provide a legal means or a lawful means to prevent us from being able to fund war. So we would be able to withhold our taxes from government and say, OK, well, you can't make us pay taxes because we're contractually obligated to not fund any organisation that's funding war and you're funding war and, and waging war, so we're contractually obligated not to pay you any tax. You know, theoretically this could work because there's no real contract that exists between you and government that's valid because there's never been any full disclosure. So by setting something like this up, 
you could conceivably get some person, one person, to challenge the system and actually succeed and set a legal precedent. And that could actually work. But of course it's complicated because you've got to do this state by state. It's going to be different in the United States and it's going to be different in other countries. So you've got to set it up so it's going to work all around the world. Can this be done? Obviously this is going to cost a lot of money to see if this can be done. So yeah, Ken said, well, let's see if we can do it. So we set up the fundraiser. Well, he set up the fundraiser and I supported it because I thought that's what it was about. A lot of people supported it because that's what it was about. So the concept was to set up this website, run the fundraiser, see if this could be done, get the legal work happening to see if it could be done. So this was done and then we get to Acapulco and I asked Ken, well, what's going on? And he says, well, I've spent $4,000 and it doesn't look like there's a way of really doing this. But then he says, but it doesn't matter. We can do it. We can get the numbers. We can do it anyway. And I'm going, well, hang on. If, if it can't be done legally, well, yeah, we can do it anyway. We can get the numbers, but we don't need money to do that. We, we don't need to be selling people a certificate for a dollar, which is what you want to do. Why do you need to be selling people a certificate for a dollar if all you need is numbers? Because the money's just going to get in the way, it's going to confuse people. And if there's no legal ramifications or no legal standing to the document, then why do you need the money? Well, what are these people going to be defending? There's no legal defense in the document. You're doing it through by pure numbers. You don't need any money involved. So what's the fundraiser for? And I didn't really see Ken for the rest of the whole time that he was in Acapulco. And after that, the, the team's coming to me and they're complaining. They're saying, well, you know, he, he wants me to set up this website for, to launch the project. And we don't know what the project is. Nobody knows what the project is because obviously it's not what it was supposed to be. Because what it was supposed to be was seeing if, if this could be done. And now I'm being told that it doesn't look like it can legally be done. So, OK, what's the fundraiser for? Why aren't you just giving the rest of the money back and saying, well, it can't be done legally, but if we get the numbers, we can do it anyway? At that point, if you actually gave the money back, you would have everyone go, wow, this guy is totally on the level. He really wants to do this, and you'd get millions of people signing up, you know. But he, he didn't want to do that. And then I'm meeting another guy there, a guy called Ken Cousins, who says he's done the legal work and he's back-engineered every legal system in every country, so he knows how it works. So I'm saying to Ken, well, why don't you guys get together, because he's got all the goods you need to be able to work, make this work in every country. But Ken didn't even want to talk to him. Nobody wanted to talk to each other, and, it, and we couldn't get hold of him. And this has gone on for months and months, and it's going on, and, the, and the, the, the team's freaking out, and they're asking me. So I'm sort of thinking, well, what's going on here? So I'm starting to approach Ken, and I'm saying, well, this is getting really dodgy. Things are looking really bad, and a lot of people have recommended on my say-so. So where is this going? What is the mission? Nobody knows what the mission is. You've gathered all this money. Now we've discovered that the, the original plan of this legal document or this lawful standing to prevent us funding war isn't going to happen. So what is the mission? What are we supporting? All our faces are out there, our names are out there supporting this project and none of us now know what we are supporting. So I'm trying to get answers from him and I'm not getting any answers. And then the team is, is basically freaking out saying they want to go public and I'm saying, well, hang on a minute, this is, this is my friend. I want to give this guy every opportunity to do the right thing. So I meet him in Philadelphia and we end up having basically a screaming match with each other. And folks, I've been travelling for 59 hours I've been awake. I've been travelling for 46 hours. Ken's giving me all this legal stuff and I'm going, OK, well, you, you got some idea. Just deliver the goods and I'll keep the team off your back. Just deliver the goods and let's see where we're going with all this. Let's see what you've got because we need to have something that's actually going to work, not just some pipe dream, you know. And then um, the next thing I know, I get the subversion report in the mail. And I look at this and I think, okay, well, what is this? Now, I'm being accused. I'm being accused of subverting the mission because I'm asking questions and the mission just isn't what it appears to be. So this makes me question everything that I've ever done with Ken. I started really looking at this and I started really questioning my whole relationship with this guy. And the team's there and they're saying, well, what do we do now? And I'm saying, well, Ken's saying he's going to release this subversion report. He's told me to prepare my strategy of lies because he's going to release this report. And then he says, and if I hear one whiff, then I'll release it. So I'm going, well, hang on, you're telling me you're going to release it. And now you're telling me that if you hear one whiff of anything from me or my friends, you're going to release this report. Okay, so this is blackmail. So what are you actually up to? And then he's got hold of Matt and he's trying to do the community connector. He's still trying to do all this. He's got a new team. He's trying to launch the project. And I'm going, well, what is the project that you're launching? 
And from the conversations that he's had with Matt, it sounds like it's a pyramid scheme. It was going to be $1 that this certificate was going to be sold to people for. He told us back in Bali, now it's $12, but what are they actually buying? What are they signing up for? So I'm looking at all of this and I'm thinking, well, okay, he's actually going to launch this project and people are going to be buying the certificate for $12 that has no legal standing. What is it? What is this? And according to what Matt has discovered and the conversations he's had with Ken and the conversations he's had with William and the entire team which has walked away, this looks like it's just a pyramid scheme. And I look at it and I step back and I go, well, okay, here's Ken. He's gone and set himself up on extradition-free tax haven Dominica and he's going to launch this big project. And I notice he's aligned himself with all of the independent media. And I'm thinking, well, if this project goes off, and this is a pyramid scheme, it's going to bring down the entire independent media. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, what do I do? What do I do from this point? I've pleaded with Ken, I've pleaded and I've pleaded and I've pleaded. I've asked for questions, I've asked for answers. And all I've got is a subversion report and accusations that I want to have sex with his girlfriend. What is this? What is this? So I've got a question. I've got a question, everything. And when I did that show with Richie Allen, I mean, in my defence, I was given half an hour's notice to do that show. I tried to do it. The connection was bad. I wouldn't allow it. So we resigned to record it when there was a connection, which ended up being 3 a.m. in the morning for me. So I got up and recorded that show. It was 3 a.m. I'd been awake for five minutes, and I was quite emotional. And I put forth a lot of questions that weren't related to this World Citizen Project at all, because... Once this really struck home to me, I began to question my entire relationship with Ken. And yeah, Ken, I've got questions for you. I really do. I've got questions about our trip to Gaza. I've got questions about all sorts of stuff. Maybe they're things that I shouldn't have put on air, but there's questions I've got. I really do. You know, this, this whole thing, you know, if this thing had gone off and you're there in Tax Haven, Dominica, and you've aligned yourself with all of the independent media, this has the potential to do so much damage to so many people, if I'm right. And I can't get any answers out of you to find out if I'm right or if I'm wrong. All I get is accusations and blackmail. And you can say it's not blackmail because there's no money involved, but Ken, it's blackmail. You said to me, I will release this. The only reason I haven't released it is out of respect for your life's work. What do you mean my life's work, Ken? I mean, seriously, what do you think a few podcasts and a few videos is my life's work? Really? Is that what you think? You think you can affect my career? I don't have a career, Ken. This isn't a career. I never wanted to do this. I'm a guitar player who suddenly got thrust into this. You know, all of these conspiracy theories about I'm this and I'm that. I'm a guitar player who made a slideshow, who got interviewed by a radio host, and people happened to like my voice, and I got offered a radio show. So I'm able to get up there and speak my mind. That's all I am. I'm not anything. I'm a nobody. I'm I'm a perfect example that you don't have to be somebody to make a difference. All you have to do is be prepared to speak. So I don't have a career. There's no career for you to ruin. And you can't ruin my life's work because my only life's work is my own work on my own life. And unless you're threatening my life, you can't ruin my life's work. So it's not about that. It's about the fact that a lot of people donated a lot of money for a project and they thought it was something and now it seems to be something else. And we don't know what it is. But you look at all of the red flags that I saw all the way along the line. Everything that I saw all the way along the line. And you get to the point where this is about to be launched and this looks like a pyramid scheme. I can get no joy out of anybody for anything. I can get no answers out of anybody. And I start to have real questions about who you really are. So for my own safety, I went as public as possible. And I warned you about this. I warned you if you ever tried to cross me, I would sting you like you would not believe because that's who I am. And when it comes out, when that sting comes out, Ken, and when it comes out, I I can't control it. I just go where spirit leads me. And I don't care if I sting myself to death in the process because this looks like a lot of people are about to be ripped off and a lot of people are about to be burnt. And I've got no explanations from you. I've got no explanations from anybody. So all you people out there, who are accusing me of this and accusing me of that, whatever, you know, I don't really care. Whatever you accuse me of, whatever gets you off, work your way through it, I don't know. But you see all these red flags that I saw up to this point, and you tell me, what would you have done? What would you have done at this point? You know, when I can see the damage that this could do, what would you have done? 
I didn't think that I had any other choice. What am I going to do, go to the police? Why would I go to the police? I speak out about these people all the time. What's this going to do, tie it up in legal red tape? It's rubbish. That's happened with every other fundraiser Ken's done. And look at him now, he's still doing it. You know, And for him to turn on me the way he did, I don't know, this guy was my friend. And why did I wait so long? Because he's my friend. You know, I'm an empath, folks. I really feel for people and I really care about people. And what I did coming out with what I said about Ken is one of the hardest things, possibly the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Certainly the hardest thing that I've had to do since I've been speaking out about people and speaking out about this system and trying to make some change in the world. So you can judge me however you want, but I just called it how I saw it and I felt that I had a responsibility to do so. I've actually received dozens and dozens of thank you letters from people. I've received letters from people that have been involved in Ken's past fundraisers. I've received letters from people that are involved in this fundraiser. And a lot of people have thanked me for what I did and said that they wanted to say something, but they couldn't because they are nobody and nobody would listen to them. And in fact, that the only person who probably could have come out with this information is me. And so I did it. I don't even really care what anybody thinks about me for doing so. But look, folks, all these conspiracy theorists about, you know, who I am and what I am and all this sort of stuff, I'm a nobody, folks. I'm a guitar player. My life was a train wreck until I was about 40, you know, until my wife left me, and that's what really woke me up. And then it took me about another five years to really claw myself back to any form of decency. And then I started speaking out and trying to really, really do the right thing with my life. And anybody can do that. It doesn't matter what you've done. It matters what you do from this point forth. That's what really counts. But I'm not anybody, folks. And all these rumours about this, this rumour, someone's put up there the picture of uh, Ken and I and David Icke. Look at them, thick as thieves, you know. Thick as thieves, folks. You know, I've met David twice, David Icke. I met him when he came to Australia. We went out to uh, Ayers Rock because the guy who organised the tour organised for me to come along. And I met him again that day that that photo was taken with Ken and I. That was actually the first time Ken ever met David Icke. David was speaking at the... I don't know what the venue was, it was on Isle of Wight. And I was in England, it was in 2012, it was the first time I'd ever been to England. First time I'd ever actually met Ken O'Keefe and I was staying at his house. And David was speaking at the Isle of Wight, it was his preparation for his big gig at Wembley, I think. So I called him, I sent him an email, I said, David, can you put my name on the door with a couple of friends? And he did. So I went along to the gig and I saw the gig and then I went backstage to meet him and I took Ken to meet him as well. That was the first time Ken ever met him and someone snapped that shot. I think that's the, actually the last time, that was the second time that I ever met David Icke and it's the last time that I ever met David Icke. It was the first time Ken ever met him and we were backstage there talking to him for all of four minutes, I think. Yeah, thick as thieves, folks, thick as thieves. It's amazing what conspiracy theorists will do and what they will come up with. But folks, I did what I did because I felt that I had to do it and I really had no choice. And I did it the way I did because I really didn't think I had a choice in that either. You know, I just do things, folks. I just follow spirit and I do things. And if it feels right, I do it. And yeah, it felt right, but it feels bad too. You know, I feel very, very bad for the pain that Ken is suffering. And I don't encourage anyone to take any action against Ken. I don't encourage anyone to abuse him or to hate him or anything. You know, I don't hate him. I don't hold grudges. I feel sorry for him. You know, I reached out to him and I told him that I would do this if he didn't do the right thing. I told him that I would, I would snap. I warned him that I was getting close to snapping. And when I snap, shit just happens, folks. It just does, you know. But um, I don't encourage any bad action against Ken. And, hey, you can think whatever you like of me, whatever gets you through. To be honest, I'm, you know, seriously thinking about packing it all in anyway. I can't really afford to do this anymore. I've spent my entire life savings for trying to wake the world up. I get a lot of complaints from people as well. Oh, look, he asked for donations, you know. Folks, I did this for eight years before I even set up that Patreon account for people to be able to offer regular subscriptions. And you still don't have to subscribe to get all the access of the website. You know, I've put a lot into it and I've done what I can to try to wake the world up. But I don't have any resources left. I did have, you know, all my SGs, all my guitars, all my stuff, but I've sold it all. I've got rid of everything. And I've just lived off my savings and off the stuff that I've had for the last eight, ten years while I've dedicated everything into trying to wake the world up. And it's been a full-time job. 
But now I've got nothing left. You know, all I can depend on is if people want me to keep going, if they do like the radio shows, if they want the films and they want me to keep going, I need help, I need support. And I'm down to nine stone now. I make enough money from the website to be able to pay my rent, put Petra in the car, and have about four meals a week. And you know, that's not really a lot to ask. That's not really a lot. That's not really profiteering from anything. People ask, how does he get to travel all around the world and stay in all these exotic places? Well, the people who organise the gigs organise for me to fly their folks and they organise the accommodation. And most of them I don't even get paid for. You know, travelling's gruelling, folks. So let's say, yeah, look at Max, he's on a world tour. Look at last year or this year. I went to Mexico, I went to Philadelphia, I went to Ohio, I went to London, and I went to Amsterdam, and I spoke in all those places. And that's gruelling. Doing all that travelling is gruelling. And out of all those five places that I spoke in, I got paid once. Once, folks. So it isn't like I do this and for wealth or anything like that. I do it and I go and speak to people because I think the message needs to get out there. You know, I, I really believe in what I say. I really believe that people can make a change if they choose to become empowered. And that's what it's always been about. Just respect people around you and stand up together and say, hey, enough is enough. We don't want this anymore, you know. But we're not doing that. We're too busy fighting amongst each other. And anybody who says, hey, we need some unity so we can stand up together, oh, no, he's the new world order. Everybody is attacked. Everybody is defamed. Anybody who tries to create any type of unity at all is classed as a, a shill or a new world order. And if you don't believe in every single thing that I say, you're a shill. You know, we can't have any debate anymore. There's no debate on any topics. You have to believe in every single point that everybody makes or you're a shell. It's the new buzzword. It's unbelievable, folks. I mean, there used to be some sanity in this movement. There used to be some hope in this movement. There used to be some direction. But now it's just a big mess of infighting. And all I've really done with what I've done, folks, is open Pandora's box a little bit. You know, it's time to clean out the trash. It really is. It's time to start calling things for what they are. Sure, I don't want to witch hunt against Ken, and I believe questions should be asked and they should be answered and we should be given a rational opportunity to do that. But I did that with Ken. I gave him every opportunity to answer these questions and to just show us what this mission is. Because if we're supporting a mission and we don't know what it is, and it costs $12 each for everybody to sign up and you want them to sign up more, and I can just see a lot of money being funneled into a situation where, okay, you know, this media hub that you always talked about that you wanted to set up on Dominica you know if that's what it was about you should have said that in the beginning you shouldn't have said it was to create a lawful contract and then oh well now that we can't do that we'll just get the numbers and we'll set this media hub up to do it that isn't how it works Ken if you want to set the media hub up you do the fundraiser to set the media hub up on Dominica but you don't do what you've done it's just not honest there's no integrity there I don't care what you say, there's no integrity there. And for you to have sent me that subversion report, I'm your friend. I'm your friend, man. We've done stuff together that I haven't done with anybody. And when you sent me that subversion report, it was like putting a knife in my heart. And when you did that, you set in, you know, you just set a series of events in motion that led to an inevitable conclusion. This had to happen. And you called me in for it to your life for this to happen. You know, because this is the way it is, you know. Enlightenment is a destructive process, folks, it really is. It's tearing away the veil, and it's a breaking down of everything you believe to be true. There are no leaders in this movement, and you have to learn to lead yourselves. And that's been my message right since the beginning. You know, people look at me and they put me up on this pedestal as this guru or whatever. No, folks, I got thrust into that position. That's the label that you people give me. Really, I'm just a social misfit. I'm a guitar player with attitude. I don't do authority, I don't do fear, I don't take a backward step to anybody, I just call things the way I see them. If people don't like it, hey, well, you don't like it. And for all those people that are worried about all the insults and stuff that I post on YouTube sometimes, really, really horrendous insults that I give people, yeah, I do. If you're going to come and accuse me of things, folks, I'm going to make up an insult that is so over the top, so ridiculous that it borders on comedy. And I'm going to post it there so you can think about yourself. Because if you want to tangle with me when I'm feeling down and when I'm feeling in pain and you want to try to amplify that pain, I'll give you back ten times what you can give me. Because I want people to know that I am human. I do feel things and I do get angry. 
I really do, folks. I'm pissed off at this whole affair. I really am. I didn't want to do it, and I still don't want to do it. And, you know, I just did what I did. But, yeah, if you come at me, I'm going to come back at you. That's the way it is. I'm human. And it's good that you see me do that because then maybe you won't have me up on a pedestal and view me as some type of super wise guru, some leader of the flock, because I'm not. I can't lead you. Only you can lead you. And, you know, you've got to work that out for yourself. So I guess that's about it. Anything else that I want to clarify? I think that's about it. Oh, wait on the OPPT. Let's, I'm still hearing stuff about that. Let me just offer you a quick two minutes on the OPPT, folks. The OPPT was another thing, so, kind of similar to what Ken was doing. What I saw valuable in the OPPT was that one filing that said, if you be, you are free. Because I thought, okay, if you're someone who really believes all this paper-based legal fiction is real, well, okay, here's a piece of paper that says you're free. Do you feel free now? And that's it. All the rest of it was noise. And then it all turned into this big thing and all this stuff and all this rubbish. It was just ridiculous and absolute noise. And I told them that you've all got rocks in your head. And how do they get involved in the OPPT to begin with? Santos Bonacci contacted me, hassled me for about two weeks to hold an online forum with the OPPT on my radio show so we could bring this thing to the world to show them how it would work, this loophole. He organised, I didn't really know much about the OPPT and I still don't, but he was the one who really wanted to promote this and push it to the people and I believed it, okay, because he was really pushing me saying, yes, Max, this is it, this is it, because at that time I was into the whole trust law, I was going down that rabbit hole, folks, you go down all these rabbit holes, the legal rabbit hole, the free man rabbit hole, the trust law rabbit hole, you figure out it's all bullshit, it's all rubbish, it doesn't matter, none of it's rubbish, it's all irrelevant, but that's the way we do it, it's a learning process. So at the time I was down that rabbit hole, Santos has pushed me to have this OPPT meeting, so he's organised all the crew to come on my radio show that he was going to host, and then about 60 seconds before we go to air, he contacts me and says, Max, I can't make it. And he left me on air hosting a two-hour show with people that I had no idea what it was about. I'm trying to get them to explain it to me on air. And basically, it was a setup. So if you really want to know what my involvement in the OPPT is, then go ask Santos Bernacci. Have a nice day, folks.